Uh, hi. So I'm Boris Brazilian, and today I'm going to talk about the plans I have for the NAND framework. So first, um, let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm working for Free Electrons for almost three years now. And I have contributed to a lot of uh, drivers for uh, different ARM SLCs. And since the beginning of the year, I became the maintainer of the NAND subsystem, which is why I'm doing this talk, actually. <laughs> um, so let's see what we're going to see during this presentation. Um, first, this is about dealing the current state of the NAND framework and all its limitations and in inconsistencies. And then I'd like to propose some changes, but nothing is set, is set in stone. So um, if you think that the changes I propose are not relevant or uh, they do not fit what you need, then come and share your ideas uh, with me. And yes, l the last aspect is uh, getting some feedback from people which are really developing NAND controller drivers. So let's see where the uh, NAND framework stands in the uh, flash stack and Linux. So in the middle, you have M MTD, which is abstracting all kind of uh, flash storage. And under this uh, abstraction layer, you have the NAND framework, which is um, layer between the NAND controller drivers and the uh, MTD layer. And of course, uh, on top of the MTD layer, you have all the MTD user, which includes a uh, file system like G GFFS2, F2, or a uh, world leveling layer like UBIFS, UBI, sorry. So um, when we talk about um, the NAND subsystem, actually we are talking about raw NANDs. So the NANDs which are accessed through the NAND bus. Um, everything that is uh, abstracting in the NAND subsystem is actually done through the uh, NAND chip structure. So why is the current NAND framework so limited? Well, the first thing is that it's been created a long time ago in uh, the 2.4.6 kernel. And it has evolved a bit, but it has never been reworked uh, to handle all the new controllers and all the modern uh, NAND chips, which led to um, an addition of uh, new features, but no real um, resync of, of the whole uh, subsystem. Um, another thing that is not so good is that you see a lot of code duplicated on uh, all NAND controller drivers. And this is usually boilerplate code which could be done inside the subsystem itself. So we're trying to address that, but there are still a lot of, of this code in, in NAND controller drivers. And um, yeah. Um, Actually, sometimes the, the NAND framework is too open to um, bring some consistency to the subsystem, and sometimes it's too restrictive on some aspects, which prevents optimization of, of uh, performances. Um, and of course, uh, this makes the raw NAND usage way less efficient than what you have on EMMCs. So yeah, what I'm currently trying to do is improve the NAND subsystem to get uh, better performances and to help uh, developers developing their NAND controller drivers. So as I said, um, the main problem with the NAND subsystem is that it has evolved a bit each time someone needed a new feature. And this uh, actually has been done use adding some new hooks inside the strict NAND chip. And if you look at the strict NAND chip nowadays, it's filled with a lot of uh, function pointers. And when you come into the system and you don't know anything about it, it's completely crazy. So you, it's documented, but it's still not obvious which function should be implemented, which one should not. 
and some methods which should be uh, handled by the core are actually exposed to NAND controller drivers, which means they can overrule them, and this led to some problems and some inconsistencies. So all that result in um, an hardly maintainable uh, subsystem. Um, since all drivers can implement the functions as, as they want, this also brings some inconsistency to the MTD users. Because depending on the controller you have on your board, you won't see the same thing uh, that you could have seen on, on, other, on another board. So this can be a problem. So yeah, uh, in, the, uh, um, in the other side, in the other end, um, the NAND subsystem is also too restrictive to allow uh, good performances. So I don't know if some of you are uh, developing NAND controller drivers, but s almost all modern controllers are providing some advanced features like pi pipelining, uh, accessing several uh, NAND dies in parallel, and, and stuff that could bring a huge uh, performance gain. But actually, the, the, the framework is limiting all that because everything is uh, queued inside the, the framework, and um, then everything is serialized. And this is a big problem. So yeah, in some aspect, the framework is too open, and it will, in others, it, it, it's too uh, restrictive. And the other uh, thing that is missing is support for all advanced features that you can find on modern NAND chips. So uh, here I'm talking about cached accesses, multiplane accesses, multi die accesses, and probably other uh, things that NAND vendors provide. Um, so yeah, the, the goal here is really to uh, get best the best performance we, we can have. And for example, I just try on one of, on, on one of, my, of my setup uh, um, to use DDR bus and uh, cached accesses, and it gave pretty good results. So we should really find a way to, to support those, those advanced features. But back to the, the changes I'd like to uh, introduce. The, the first thing is that the NAND chip interface is kind of fuzzy. And the first thing we need to do is um, clarify the different concepts we have in, in the NAND uh, stack. Um, the first problem we have is that you have a single NAND chip strict. And this NAND chip strict is supposed to represent a NAND chip, except that this is the controller which initializes the NAND chip, and then this is the controller which fills almost all the uh, NAND methods. What is done in other subsystems is that usually you have the core, which is accepting uh, NAND controller registration, uh, NAND controller driver registration, and then is the, the, the core is linking NAND devices with uh, NAND controllers. And that's what I'd like to introduce in, in the NAND subsystem. So uh, splitting the um, NAND chip interface, which is supposed to represent the NAND chip itself, and, and the NAND controller interface, which is supposed to uh, provide some methods to access the NAND chip through the NAND bus. Um, so yeah, the goal is to move some of the methods we have in uh, NAND chip and move them into NAND controller. But not all of the methods, because some of them are really related to uh, the NAND chip it itself. So you know that some NAND vendors provide some features, and depending on the vendor, it's not exactly the same set of commands you have to send to the NAND to access the feature. So we still need some uh, methods which are at the chip level. But then, most of the methods we, we find nowadays in uh, NAND controller and uh, NAND chip are actually related to the NAND controller. So yeah, um, 
And the second aspect, I'll, actually, I, I'd like to sing a bit about, uh, sing a bit before uh, moving all the metals from NAND chip to NAND controller, because some of them are actually not so good and s not fitting what the NAND controllers nowadays, uh, how the NAND controller nowadays work. So we need to take our time and think whether this method fit or whether we should introduce a method which is uh, better fitting, fitting our needs. So if you look at most drivers nowadays, this uh, on the left, this is what's done. The NAND controller drivers, they just assume that they have one controller and one chip, and they declare that as a single entity and register the, the NAND chip to the uh, NAND uh, framework. But actually, when you look at the data sheet of those NAND controllers, they usually can handle more than one NAND chip. And this is how it should be done. So you should have one NAND controller, and then you should discover several NAND chips on the NAND bus. And your NAND controller should be able to uh, and they'll more than one NAND chip. Um, so yeah, about the, the method you, you'll find in, in NAND chip itself, um, it's, most of them are really not clear. Um, Sometimes developers think they are using them correctly or implementing them correctly, but actually they are not. Um, and yes, I already said that it's not clear which method sh should be implemented by the NAND controller driver and which one should be uh, implemented by the uh, NAND chip driver. Um, and yeah, if you look at the method, you have two kind of methods. Um, you have those which are designed to be used by simple controllers, and you have those which are designed to be used by more advanced controllers. And it's not clearly stated in, in, in the documentation, which is kind of confusing. Um, and as usual, everything is just mixed up in, in strict NAND chip, and, and it's really easy to, to get it wrong. So let's just take an example. And I think this is the, the, the method which is actually the, the most abused in, in, in the NAND framework. So, Let's have a look at the uh, common function uh, common func method. So this is the method which is used to ask the NAND controller to send a command to a specific NAND chip. And before we uh, dig into the, NAND, the common function method, let's see uh, what a NAND operation is. So a NAND operation is here to do a specific operation like read a page, write a page, erase a block, read the uh, NAND identification, I, uh, the NAND ID. And if you look a bit deeper, you'll see that a NAND operation is actually formed of uh, one or several command cycles, one or several uh, address cycles, and one or several uh, or zero data cycles. So. Let's take a few examples. The read page command is first sending a command cycle, a zero, zero command cycle, then a few address cycles, which are telling the NAND chip which page should be read, and then the 30 command cycle, and then you have some data cycles to retrieve the data from the NAND chip. Uh, it's pretty much the same for uh, the write page command, except that you'll have the last command after you have transmitted the data, because you need to transmit the data before programming the page. But you also have uh, less complicated commands, like reset the chip. In this case, you only send a single command cycle. And read ID, which uh, is just reading the NAND ID to detect which NAND we have on the bus. And in this case, you have a single command cycle, a single address cycle, and then a few uh, data cycles to retrieve the, the ID. So now let's, back to the, uh, let's go back to the command function. 
Um, actually, it's partially handling the, uh, the, the NAND operation. Command function is here just to send the command cycles and address cycles. It's not doing all the data transfer on the, on the bus. And the data transfers or the data cycles are actually done using read, write, byte, word, or both. So, and you remember that I said that the framework provides an interface for simple controllers and an interface for uh, complex controllers. And actually, this is done using the command control method. And then the core provides a wrapper to implement the um, command function method. So if you look at the default implementation of command function in the NAND framework, you'll see that it's calling command control several times. So it's calling command control each time you have a command or, or address cycles. And that's how it's implemented. So first thing, depending on whether you are implementing a simple NAND controller or a complex one, you will have to choose between implementing command function directly or letting the core do all the hard stuff for you and just focus on implementing command control, which is just sending a single cycle, whether it's uh, a command or address cycle specified in, in parameter. Um, but again, even if command function is supposed to uh, be designed for advanced controllers, it's not really the case, because nowadays, nowadays the NAND controllers are able to send the whole NAND operation in, in one go. So you'd want to um, actually, in command function, you'd want to also do, do the uh, I.O. operation, the data transfer. And the problem is, when common function is called by the NAND framework, uh, it's not passed any information on how many bytes you have to read, which is a real problem, because some NAND controllers just can't do uh, NAND uh, operation without uh, linking with it the, uh, the I.O. operation. So yes, even if it has been designed for advanced controllers at some time, it's not really the case today. Um, this is also a problem because the NAND, the NAND operations evolve over the time. The NAND vendors decide to add new operations. And if you ask all NAND controller drivers to support all the, the set of commands, this means that when you add a new operation and you want to use it in, in the framework, you'll have to go over all the controller drivers and patch all of them to make them support this new command, this new operation. And this is really a pain to maintain. Because, yes, you'll have to patch everything and then ask all the people to test it, and that doesn't work well. This also implies that for the same NAND chip, depending on the controller you have on the board, you won't have the same behavior. Because here, yeah, the controllers are free to implement the command function as, as they want. So they may just support a, a, a small subset of functions, which means you might not be able to, to access all the NAND feature, which is, again, a pain to, to, to maintain and, and to explain to NAND users. And yeah, the fact that all NAND controller drivers have to re-implement everything is kind of encouraging people to just implement a minimal set of uh, command. And yeah, this just tear the, the wall support down for the, the wall subsystem. So. so to address the limit, this limitation, the idea is to just add a new uh, method inside the NAND controller structure. And this method would uh, actually ask to execute the whole operation, which means this, this time you would have the whole thing, including the, the IO transfer and the size you want to transfer. 
So this should fit most of the con NAN controller, at least those that I've seen. But I've heard that some people are interacting with NAND controllers which are not allowing such fine grain uh, configuration. So all they are allowing is some high level commands like read this page, write this page, or read the ID, or reset the NAND. And in this case, yeah, the uh, exec operation is not really uh, good. So for this kind of case, I guess we'll, we'll have to add a new uh, interface to deal with high-level NAND controllers. But maybe it's n not even supposed to be on the NAND framework. Maybe it should directly be linked to the MTD subsystem. So that, that's not really clear yet, and I don't have any of these controllers, which means I can't provide something uh, really. So if some of you have some ideas or this problem, then just come and talk to me after, after the talk. So, yeah, this is not the only problem we have uh, in the NAND framework. Another one is that the NAND framework tries to be smart, and sometimes it, it helps, because this means NAND drivers, NAND controller drivers, don't have to implement everything, don't have to implement uh, all the methods which are described in, in NAND chip. But sometimes the decision which is taken by the framework is just wrong. And it leads to some weird behavior uh, when you are trying to use the NAND. So the idea is to try to avoid uh, guessing what the NAND controller driver wants and instead providing helpers and ask the NAND controller uh, driver to use these helpers when uh, they know they want to rely on, on the default implementation. Um, when the driver does not implement a function, instead of trying to do something, we should just say it's not supported and return an error. And that would be a bit clearer uh, than trying to do something which is obviously wrong. Um, yeah, we are also trying to adapt the, the framework to developer needs, so some people complain that, for example, they, uh, they couldn't test whether uh, build flips were present in uh, erased pages. And instead of um, having the same block of code in all drivers, we decided to provide some helpers for that. Um, Brian also did some work to automate the uh, DT parsing, which is good because this removed a lot of play code in all uh, controller drivers. And we recently also automated the uh, timing setting, which has also a lot of, uh, which removes also a lot of code in, in some drivers. So this is good, but of course we need to continue with that and we need to push it even further. And yeah, when we uh, move to the then controller approach, we should really take the new uh, constraint into account. So new NAND controllers are able to do uh, awesome stuff, and we should really uh, support that from the ground up. Another thing that is, uh, uh, um, in my opinion, a problem, but maybe not that much, is that um, the NAND and MTD concepts are uh, just mixed all over the place. And if you look at the method you have right now in NAND chip, they are usually passed a pointer to uh, an MTD device and a pointer to a NAND device. And actually, those objects are the same thing. The MTD device is just the abstraction of the NAND device so that any kind of MTD user can use the device. So yeah, we try to remove that. And we, uh, the first thing we did was uh, including 
the MTD device directly in the NAND chip structure, which means now you are able to uh, retrieve the uh, MTD device from the NAND chip object. And this way, you can just pass the NAND chip to the um, NAND chip method. So this removes one of the parameters. And of course, we'd like to go further and just completely hide the fact that the NAND chip is actually an, an MTD object. But that takes a lot of time. So now, uh, I think the most interesting part is this one. And yeah, the, the real work we are trying to do is actually um, based on the assumption that current, the, fr the current implementation is not providing uh, good performances. So the idea is to try to get the best of the, the NAND chip and the best of the NAND controller and try to provide uh, decent performances, which is not the case right now. So uh, first, let's have a look at the different design we have in the wild. Um, the first one on the top is where you have a single controller and a single NAND chip, and you connect them through the NAND bus. So that's what you usually, usually, usually have on uh, boards. But sometimes you have NAND chips which are actually embedding two dies. And in this case, you will connect the same NAND chip. Uh, the, this NAND chip will multiple dies to a single NAND controller. And you'll be able to interact with different dies. And the last case is pretty much the same as the one in the middle, except that instead of having two different packages, you have, uh, instead, of, yeah, instead of having one package, you have two different packages. But from the NAND controller point of view, it's pretty much the same. So the, the case in the middle is ju could just be handled as, as two different chips. It's just, it's just that. It's in the same package. And the good thing is that uh, modern NAND controllers are able to take uh, advantage of that. So they are able to uh, access the multiple lines in parallel and queue operation and, and do uh, fancy stuff which are improving a lot the performances. The bad thing is that the NAND framework is just preventing all of that because all the accesses that are going through the NAND controller are just serialized at the framework level. And each time you want to actually, for example, read a page, the framework will split that read operation into several uh, command func read page operation. And this takes a lot of time, and this prevents all optimization and at the NAND controller level. So the idea I have, and it's not definitive yet, but the idea is to uh, completely remove the, the whole serialization at the NAND layer level, and instead ask the NAND controller to do uh, all the queuing work and the dequeuing work. So instead of sending a command function, you would send a high-level uh, operation, which is queue NAND IO request. And then you would wait for the NAND IO request to be completed. And this way, you can send several NAND IO requests in parallel and let the NAND controller just dispatch the request as needed and try to optimize all the, all the, um, the operation. Now let's talk a bit about uh, the optimization you can do at the chip level. So the first thing is that no matter what you try to use at the chip level, it depends on the implementation of the controller. So even if we try to use uh, the cached accesses or the multiplane accesses or the multi-die accesses, you'll need to have a controller which takes advantage of that. Otherwise, it's pretty much useless. Um, so yes, the idea is to really, uh, once we have decent controller support, uh, try to use those advanced features because they are uh, providing uh, better performances. 
the thing is that not all chips support those features. So we need to have a way to let the non-controller know which features are supported by the NAND chip. Um, this is already uh, standardized in ONFI and GDEC, but of course, not all NANDs are compliant with ONFI and GDEC, so we need a way to um, expose that in a um, generic way. And of course, in the end, the one de taking a decision of optimi optimizing or not the, the access is definitely the NAND controller. So let's have a look at the cached access feature. Um, when the NAND says that it, has, it can do cached accesses, actually what you have is two different uh, regions in the NAND which are used to uh, store the data which will be read or written. And instead of waiting for the data to be flushed to the NAND or uh, retrieved from the NAND, you start retrieving the next page or uh, uh, getting data for, uh, to write to the next page. So this also helps a lot when uh, your um, ECC calculation and IO transfers take uh, a lot of time compared to the read operation or program operation. And with modern NANDs, those MLC and those with uh, big pages, actually it helps a lot because you can start doing the IOs before the program operation is done or start reading the next page before the IO operation and um, ECC correction is done. So yeah, it's, as I said at the beginning, uh, it could help improve the performances a lot. <coughs> Another kind of optimization, and actually that one is a bit uh, harder to implement, but the idea would be to uh, try to uh, have some kind of I/O scattering at the uh, NAND level or at the uh, NAND framework level, uh, because, as I said, you can access different dies in parallel, and this feature can help us, um, yes, optimizing the um, the access time. So the idea is to provide some kind of scattering and so some kind of queuing at the uh, NAND die level and maybe at the NAND plane level, and then have some kind of algorithm to uh, order those accesses and let the NAND controller just dequeue one of these queues when the die is free to be, uh, is ready to be uh, accessed. So um, I'm not sure exactly how the what the gain would be, but I guess it, it could bring a, a huge uh, performance gain. So it's, it, again, it's just a basic idea. I don't know if it's easy to implement or not because I never tried, but that would be good to have. Um, another problem I've seen is that a lot of modern NANDs do not comply with the ONFI standard or GDEC standard, and even those would comply with those standards, they still expose private commands. And actually, those private commands are just not supported right now. And some of them are quite important, like read retry, which is almost mandatory for uh, MLC NANDs. So, in the current design of the NAND framework, uh, the only solution we would have to support that is to uh, implement that directly in the core. But if you look at the different NAND private commands, you'll see that the, the, the size of the code will grow quite fastly. And, um, so the idea is to instead try to separate the uh, NAND chip drivers from the core itself and put them in um, specific drivers. So this, there was a proposal, which I posted a few months ago, which was trying to do all the NAND detection and uh, take all, all of the code out of the uh, NAND core and putting the vendor-specific code in, in a separate C file. 
And actually, it works fine on my different setup. But since I never had any tested by or reviewed by, I never pushed that further. But that would be a, a good thing to clean up a bit the, the code in, in the NAND core. Um, another thing that people are trying to do right now is trying to share some code between non-based devices. So, so far we have seen that, uh, so in the slides I, I, I described the NAND framework, which is actually uh, here to deal with raw NANDs, but you, maybe you'll see uh, some different NANDs in the future. And typically I see a lot of spy NAND drivers which are coming around right now. And those spy NAND drivers would like to share some code with the NAND drivers, like the bad block table code, which is usable on all kinds of NANDs. It has nothing to do with raw NANDs. So the idea is to uh, provide an intermediate layer which is exposing generic NAND features and abstracting away the NAND interface so that we would have some common code which could be used for raw NANDs, one NANDs, spy NANDs, and maybe others. Um, and yeah, currently we are just trying to share the bad block table code, but maybe we could do, we could go even further and share the, ECC, the software implementation of BCH ECC or AMING ECC. So yeah, a new door open and Let's see what happens. And actually, uh, I posted a proposal recently to, to do that. And hopefully it will be in 4.10 or 4.11, I don't know, but should should be uh, in the near future. So yeah, the, the, the basic idea is to try to factorize the, the code and get, uh, yeah, Factorize as, as much as we can uh, the code. So I, as I said, uh, um, people were working on that and I took over recently and proposed a patch series which was creating a NAND device which is the abstraction for the uh, um, interface agnostic NAND device. And then I was uh, inheriting NAND from NAND device into NAND chip. So with this trick, I was able to just provide a generic interface at the NAND level and move the bad block table code uh, uh, at the generic NAND level. So that's pretty much all I had for today. Again, um, this is just work in progress. Some of what I propose is, has not even been implemented. So anyway, any help is welcome. Any feedback is welcome. And um, yeah, you, you can do different things if you want to help. First, you can share your ideas or uh, your problems. Explain what, what you'd like to see in the, in the framework or you can directly propose implementations so that I can review them, or you can review other proposals. And yeah, of course, uh, testing is welcome because each time I do a change at the NAND framework level, it may impact a lot of people. So that would be great if other people could test the, the changes. Uh, at the driver level, if you are implementing a driver or uh, maintaining a driver, please try to convert the driver to the new infrastructures. So I try to patch as much drivers as I can, but I just can't uh, patch all of them. So yeah, if you, if you can help with that, that, that would be great. And of course, review other submissions. Do you have any questions, suggestions, or comments? Yeah. Um, do you have a mic or? Yeah. <laughs>
Ja. Ähm. Yeah, actually, the the, um, the NAND controller is able to detect NAND chips automatically. All it needs is a chip select line or several chip select lines. So yeah, it's just about describing the the thing differently in the device tree. If you want to see a single device, just describe a single node under your controller, and then say that you n your node uh, used two different chip selects, and then it will be exposed as a multi die chip. If you want to have two different chips, just define two different nodes under your NAND controller and assign to each of these nodes the chip select line you want, and it should be seen as two different chips. So it's just about describing the thing properly, but internally it's pretty much the same. It could work. You you would just have more chip select lines and. Um, yeah, you would just have more dies. That's all. So you would have two nodes, and each of these nodes would be assigned two different chip selects. For for example. No more questions. Suggestions? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. The question was okay, the question is is there any plan to be able to use standard block file system on top of NAND? Well, you need an FTL for that. And the only FTL we have right now is UBI, and it's designed to work with UBIFS because it's acting at the erase block level and not the page level or even smaller block size. So no, we don't have that right now. <laughs> yeah, no, MTD block is not designed to um, work with read-write file system. It's there. It works with read-only file system but not well with read-write file system. So no, there, there is no solution right now. But we're on, if you want to come with an FTL implementation, I think we want to reject it. So it's just that nobody uh, matters before. Yeah, it's yeah, you can. Yeah, you can use uh, read-only block file system. Actually, that is that is done a lot. Um, you put your read-only file system inside a UBI volume. Um, yeah, th this works well, but it doesn't work with read-write file system, which is. I guess the the question. Yeah. yeah. No other questions? Okay, thank you. <laughs>